one of your articles is the world's oldest republic reveals the secret to peace and prosperity. Yes. And then you've also you've also drawn lessons from uh, from economic history in uh, in Italy. In your, I think it was in Italy. Your article: Why the separation of bank and state is so important. Would you be able to explain? Yeah, you know, what is that secret to peace and prosperity? How that's revealed by that uh, the, the world's oldest republic, and also the about the, the uh, point about the separation of bank and state, please. Okay, I'd be happy to. Both of these articles you can find at fee.org and you can find them also on uh, where I blog on uh, lawrencewreed.com. Uh, with regard to the, uh, the oldest constitutional republic, uh, we published that last Sunday and it's about uh, the tiny country of San Marino. It's the fifth smallest country in the world. It's entirely... Uh, enveloped by Italy. It's in the northeast of uh, the Italian peninsula, and right in its middle is this big rock uh, called Mount uh, Titan. And uh, it's the oldest republic in the world, dating back to the early fourth century, when um, uh, that chunk of territory was gifted from its private owner, a woman in Rimini uh, in Italy, now, now part of Italy, uh, she gifted it to a uh, Christian stonemason who had fled there to avoid the uh, persecutions of the emperor Diocletian. She said, okay, you can have this property. And, and uh, he, in effect, declared the first, uh, uh, the, now the oldest constitutional republic. Only twice in its history has it been invaded. And in both cases, uh, within a matter of months, uh, the Pope ordered the uh, invaders out. Uh, lest they be uh, attacked by papal forces. So they've maintained their independence all these years. The secret to the prosperity, and they have a GDP per capita, by the way, that's just a, a shade below that of the United States. The secret is that they have kept themselves economically free. Freedom House uh, is an outfit that rates countries uh, as to their degree of economic freedom. And they rate San Marino as the 12th freest country in the world. Its capital gains tax is only 5%, which is a third of what ours is in the US. It's much lower than it is in the European community. Um, just a great little success story in that uh, quiet little enclave in the Apennine Mountains. The other uh, example or, or article that you're referring to uh, comes from Genoa, on the other side of Italy, Northwest Italy. Uh, Genoa was for hundreds of years an Italian city-state, much as Pisa and Venice and uh, Gaeta and some others were. And uh, the secret to its success more than any other single entity was a private bank that was so private, it was in effect a country within a country. It was called the Bank of St. George. And when it was chartered in 1407, the separation between the bank and the government of, of Genoa was as complete as it could get. It basically said, we're not paying any attention to you, and you don't have to pay any attention to us, but you need us, because the bank uh, consistently bailed out the state when it got in trouble. But uh, the bank uh, was uh, very firmly on a gold standard. Uh, it had a policy of not issuing any paper for which it did not have gold coin on deposit. So it was reliable, it was honest, and for hundreds of years until Napoleon invaded and shut the bank down, it was um, a rock of stability and a big reason that Genoa uh, became such a, uh, a maritime trading giant in the Mediterranean. Right. Okay. So this wasn't uh, something positive Napoleon brought then. Uh, that's interesting. I have to read more about it. So, so how does it illustrate that the separation of bank and state is so important? How does it illustrate that? Well, the Bank of St. George uh, exerted a, an anti-inflationary uh, pressure on the government of Genoa. Uh, you know, governments love to inflate, and the moment they get in charge of banking, that's what they do. Uh, mm. They they print the stuff and uh, makes it easier for them to pay their bills and to run deficits and so forth. The Bank of uh, St. George uh, did not abide by that, and uh, they wouldn't have recognized any coin or paper from the city of Genoa if it hadn't been uh, sound. 
Um, and their example uh, spoke volumes to the people of Genoa and across Europe that, hey, here's a bank that's in great shape. It has to bail out the government of the region, in fact, every now and then because uh, they're, they're profligate, but the bank is not. So um, I think uh, the separation of bank and state is, some, is an issue I think I wish we spent a lot more time on these days. We've kind of assumed that government should be orchestrating the bank a banking system, but the history of government and banking is not a positive one. Uh, they take over banking whenever they can because it's their avenue to depreciating and debauching the currency. Yeah, Ben, I think it's a big concern when governments set up these banks or shadow banks to promote particular policy objectives. And I remember... Yeah. Or back in the late 2000s, I think it was, there was a lot of talk about an infrastructure bank. I think that was something the Obama administration was looking at but didn't go through with. And there were similar moves here in Australia that didn't didn't amount to anything. Just because it it raised the prospect or it, it reminded people, well, here it reminded people of what happened in the 80s with the state banks of South Australia and Victoria, mm. the tri-continental, the merchant banking arm and and they just got heavily involved in speculative property development, if I remember correctly, and ended up going bust and costing taxpayers uh, billions of dollars. So yeah, people still remember that. There's, I think there's a risk if governments yeah, get involved in banking and uh, yes, financial shenanigans. Uh, uh, yeah, and, and we always, too, too often anyway, we judge government by the stated intentions rather than by actual outcomes and results. If a, if, if a government came to me and said, hey, what do you think about us getting into the banking business? I would probably say to them, well, aren't you in the post office business already? And aren't people complaining about that? Why don't you get that right before you go into banking? <laughs> uh, in, in the U.S., you know, everybody complains about the post office. Well, what makes you think the same entity can can manage uh, a nation's banking system? I mean, come on. 